Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're doing well on this um, slightly cold autumn day. Um, this is your Yoga Solutions Live. I'm Mark J. Aquaviva, and this is your Yoga Solutions Live on, on this Tuesday, the 8th of October, 2019. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are. And um, yes, let's get it. Let's get started. So I have some good questions here. Let's have a look. From Lena. Oh, hi, Lena. Um, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, so I've had a few people saying they're having troubles with uh, booking on the um, on the haptic intelligence course or on the uh, the second option. Um, if you're having the same troubles, then do let me know, and uh, we'll work work out how to make technology work for you. But um, anyway, your question is about kyphosis, uh, forward hip. Okay, yeah. Um, for those of you, uh, I'm sure everyone does know, but uh, for those of you that are um, not sure what kyphosis is, it, it's when um, there is a, a, a sort of fixed um, a flexion pattern in the spine. And, uh, and a lot of people um, have it as a default position. Uh, yes, it's a slump mode, basically. And uh, the result would be that the head is carried forwards um, because to counterbalance basically um, <clears throat> so yes it's a it's quite a ubiquitous issue as is lordosis which is the uh, holding yourself up with your lumbar spine at all times so we'll have a look at that maybe um, Gail really bad sickness a week as kitten I'm sorry to hear that Gail um, yes well the <laughs> best you can do is Mahapranyamasana really and uh, Gail works with me on the course so she knows what I'm talking about it's a particular posture that we um, uh, we like to use as a bit of a cure all uh, involves lying on the ground, but um, it does involve some engagement. Um, yeah, so that, that, that's probably the best view as it, uh, I can think of for now, Gail, if you're feeling bad. So from Barbara, who's also on the call, looking looking forward to seeing you both next um, in, a, in a week week and a half's time or so. So Barbara says, anything for the core? I keep being asked about strengthening it. Or does it, does this strengthen the core? Oh, I see, yeah, that's the question you have, uh, uh, that people ask you. Any simple thing that can give a sense of feeling supported, thanks. <clears throat> well, the, the thing that people uh, talk about, uh, mean when they're talking about the core, they're talking about their abdominal muscles mostly, um, which is fine, you, know, you can, it's kind of useful to, get those muscles strong and responsive, but um, holding tension in them is a bit pointless. Um, if it becomes a, a sort of general holding pattern, then you end up, it can end up giving you problems because um, you're holding tension around your organs. It's not, it's not very good. Um, <clears throat> but nonetheless, there is some, um, there's a reason that core strength inverted commas, is talked about. And it's because we want the core of the body to be responsive, responsive to what you're doing. And uh, essentially, um, if it's not, if, if, the, if the breathing mechanism um, doesn't get involved with um, the way you engage with the earth, then essentially what will happen is you will end up holding yourself in position and that will be with your spine, which weakens the core. I mean, you know, if you're supported, um, then the body doesn't have to work out how to support you. And when you hold yourself up with your spine, then the core responses don't have any reason for engaging. So um, people then think that they have to do other things to engage the core. And with, with um, this work, um, in principle, uh, what happens is the breathing starts to relate to the action of supporting yourself, to the actions of being in space and that sort of thing. And when that happens, then the strength, the, the, the core of the body, as in the, the whole of this fluid core space, is involved in support. And that part of that is the abdominal muscles working, particularly with the out breath, to support you. Uh, but uh, you can't contrive it. Well, you can, but then the moment you stop thinking about it, you let it. It, it stops happening. So it's not. A, it doesn't become a strength. It just becomes 
either tension because you're half holding it all the time or just something that happens when you do the exercise which I don't know um, anyway I'll, I'll get I'll get more into it um, perhaps and from Tracy um, I can't jo join you live today okay I'm interested in approaches to seated rotations um, being kind to the hips, joints, hip joints, pelvic area, as well as the spine. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> we, we have a theme, I think. Um, let's have a look, see. Uh, yeah, so uh, kyphosis, let's start with that. Um, One of the um, main things that is mistaken in yoga practice, I think, is the idea of correcting. Um, it's kind of what's led to the problem in the first place. Your, your average kyphotic person is, has just found a strategy for um, being upright that involves mm, uh, minimal effort, and this goes for people that also have lordotic patterns. Um, it's, it's simply a strategy for being as relaxed as possible in space. So if, for example, you're sitting and people blame chairs for this uh, because there is a surface behind you to rest into, but whether there's a, a, a back to the chair or not, we have the potential to rest the core of the body, and this will tie into your question, Barbara. We have the potential to rest the front of the body into the sort of space behind us, as if there's a surface there to lean into. And, um, and if you do that, yes, the the, the problem that uh, Lena was talking about, the, the head will come forwards as a sort of balancing act. But if, if we're doing this with some sort of um, presence to what we're doing, some sort of physical, direct sensory um, immersion in what we're doing, then, then we don't have to do it habitually. Um, you can allow this kind of resting back into this surface. And, and basically what you're doing is you're resting into the spine and, and, and it's okay there's nothing wrong with it um, especially if you do so as a whole so it's not your upper back leaning back and then your head pulling forwards and neck lifting up so it's not that it's the whole of the spine gets a chance to meet the space behind you and if you do that from the base up then quite naturally stuff starts to happen. And one of the things that starts to happen for most people is the, the hips start to, the, the hip flexors start to get involved in pulling you forwards again. So it's, it's a kind of a fine balance between um, letting go of tension, but into the support of the space behind you. And I, I, would, I would call this um, a relationship to the space behind you rather than a relationship to parts of the body. And if you can release the breath into the full kyphosis that, um, that you're talking about, um, Lena, without a compensatory lift of the head to look forwards, because that's where the problems arise, is when we stay in these patterns but decide to involve ourselves with the world around us in a, in a, in a way that's not conducive uh, to ease in the neck and other things. So if we can fully engage or fully embrace the sort of release of tension from the front of the body into the space that we meet behind us, particularly with the out breath, you'll find that there is a core responsiveness. And that's uh, what people are talking about, Barbara, I think. You know, the, the, the kind of um, Pilates work where you're sitting on a ball and it's about um, uh, movement uh, whilst you balance. Quite naturally, the core of the body gets involved. And at other times, 
um, when you're not looking for to let go into support, um, at other times you might hold yourself in support, which would lead to a lordotic habit. Uh, and if you hold yourself in position with the lumbar spine, which is kind of, um, it's just another strategy and it's not wrong either. It, uh, the, the holding yourself up with the lumbar spine will actually help you relax your hips, for example. Um, the, uh, which is the opposite of um, trusting, uh, resting the core of the body back and getting that to respond to support the, the, the deep belly muscles and that sort of thing. So ne neither is wrong. What, what we need is a relationship to our earth, our touch, so we let go into the earth, and the space behind us so that we get a responsive um, reaction from the body's um, uh, core, core responses to breathing. So the arrival of the breath is, will, will feel like you're meeting space behind you. And that's a, a kind of, that's the way, a way the body can breathe. It's not the only way. And then the release of the breath allows you to relax into this sort of kyphotic pattern but the result will be core support. Um, so I know I'm not, I'm not correcting the kyphosis. What I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going fully into the advantages that people want to find, um, that, that people get from not holding themselves up with their back. They end up holding themselves together at the front, which is okay. But like I said, if you want to look then you don't want to stay in this relationship to the to space behind you whilst you hold yourself up to look because that will cause problems for the neck so that that will be the head forwards thing so what we need is another way of coming forwards um, if if you gained a, some sort of core responsive advantage where the lumbar spine and the neck didn't have to lift you uh, from this relationship, from this kyphotic sort of surrender. If you, if you found some sort of supportive advantage from your relationship to earth and space, then we can start to take it towards a twist, but with um, an idea of building up extension, not by, not as a, an opposite of flexion. That's where it goes wrong. The kyphotic pattern is a response to releasing into space the intention to not hold yourself up. If it becomes a habit, then you end up holding yourself up with your groins and you're holding yourself down with your belly, okay? But if we can find a way of extending that is not the opposite of that rest, is it just a simple, it's simply a different strategy, a different relationship to earth and space. And the way I can help you find that is by is 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 going to take us into twisting, um, but from a sort of side bend perspective. So th I think the thing I'm going to invite you to do is start with this feeling of resting down and back. But if you grab hold of your trousers or or uh, a knee on one side. So if we, if we turn to the left, <clears throat> you can hook your hands. Uh, it's nice to hold onto the cloth because then the hands and wrists work more authentically. If you're, if you're reaching out with your hands over your knee and holding yourself like that, it's, it, can be, um, it can lead to complications. But um, yeah, so find a, a quality of touch that it, you're going to support yourself with. Because what I don't want is for you to lift yourself with your back to come forwards. Because that will lead to, that's what leads people to thinking that relaxing is a kyphotic pattern. Okay? It's, it, we want to get past the either or thing. You want to rest into flexion, but you also want to feel supported as you use your limbs. And in this case, I'm, I'm gonna, because there was a request to do nothing to the hips, in this case, I'm going to leave the legs passive. I'm going to use the purchase of my hands on my knee to sort of rest back from, okay, so that I get a side bend on the, to open out the left hand side. So my, I'm turning to the left, my hands are on the left knee, 
or, or holding onto the left trouser, <laughs> and I'm, I'm hanging back from it to get a sense of space on this left-hand side, but I want to feel totally supported. So it's still got that quality of uh, relaxing into the space behind me. And the, here is the, the difference is, instead of just hanging back, I'm using my touch. I'm pulling with my hands, I'm pulling with my wrists to bring me, to bring my weight more onto that side. Because when, when I hang back away from it, trying to stretch the thing, then what happens is I get light on this side. It's, it's not wrong, it's just a fact. And then uh, it's a way of measuring whether I have equal support. What we want is to have the base about equal and you can pull with your arms you can pull yourself closer to the left-hand side until the left sit bone is touching the ground as much as the right, okay? You do that with your arms and remain absolutely passive in your spine, okay? So we're moving from a sort of a flexed state to a side bending state, but with the weight consistently remaining equal on the base. And the way you do that is by using your limb. The result will be a resting into space on this left hand side. And when, like when you are resting back, you could breathe into your back. When you're resting um, into the space on the left hand side, whilst you're opening up from the, from the base on the left hand side, then you get a sense of meeting that space and you can breathe into it. Okay, so the breathing mechanism starts to get involved with where you are in space. You, you're, it's like meeting the space on the left-hand side and, and bringing the hand up the middle, with the, uh, led by the elbow, and bringing it up as far as the chin so that the head doesn't remain separate from what you're doing. You know, it can become part of the movement. And it's not lifting with your, with your back. It's embracing the space that you occupy, which is actually the theme of my next uh, workshop, my next uh, set of workshops in Brighton and Glasgow. So, breathing into that space and still the spine is resting, but it's resting into a side bend. You're resting towards the left hand side, even though you're opening out on the left hand side. You breathe it, and then if you continue to feel supported by your touch, what you're starting to do is you're starting to bring the upper spine, the thoracic spine, the rounded part of the back, closer to that knee. And it's that that leads to a different kind of extension. It's not lifted by your secondary curves. It's not your neck lifting. It's not your back lifting. It's the spine coming through the body, through this space that you've created, through breathing, through meeting space, through whole-hearted movement. You breathe. And then the spine being anchored closer to that left knee means that when you release the breath, those ribs can anchor down over the space that you've created. So there will be a sense of the core, um, ribs are part of the core mechanism. You know, the, there's the, the fluid core and then there's the stuff around the core that engages to support the upward movement of that space. And that's what people are talking about when talking about core support. They're talking about the abdominal muscles, but it involves the, the ribs getting involved with anchoring down towards your base. And when you're twisting, particularly, you might, you might get some value in feeling that the left ribs kind of anchor towards the right side of the base and that the right ribs anchor towards the left side of the base. Okay, I'm exaggerating so you can see something. And that will be something to do with, and the belly muscles will be involved in that. They, there'll be a gathering feeling around that central space. And if you, if you use your arms to anchor the upper spine through, then there'll be no reason for pulling yourself around with the hip flexors. All the movement will be coming from the thoracic spine, which is essentially a kindness to the spine because uh, we're meant to extend and, and rotate mostly from the, from the thoracic spine. And for most of us, when you, when you lift and 
stretch from the lumbar spine and the neck, then the opposite happens. The thoracic spine in between those things remains immobile and all the range of movement comes from bending at both ends. What we're doing here is exactly the opposite. We're relaxing the lumbar spine, we're relaxing the neck, we're relaxing the side into spaciousness and these side bends are the segue to extension. And so it's been um, shown as a natural part of the sort of evolutionary process for human beings. So for going from uh, a flexed fetal state to extension involves crawling. It's the, the crawling action helps you find helps you find a segue, a way of resting into space in a way that leaves you flexed, a segue between that and a movement into space that extends you. So side bends to twists. Okay, let's try the other side. I hope this is answering the question. It's, it's kind of involved, um, but it, it, the thing that it, it does involve is basically letting go of current ideas. Uh, there's an idea of kyphosis needing correcting. It doesn't. What it needs, what we need, is to find the advantage of kyphosis and the, the, the nature of it. Make it more whole, so we don't impose things like lifting the head or lifting with the back to as a counter of it. You rest into that, and you know if you have your hands there, it's easy enough. But that feeling of being supported closer to your hands, closer to your hands, it's a relationship. So you rest into the sort of space behind you, you breathe into that, and then if you can rest away from the right hand side whilst drawing your weight close enough to the right hand side for the base to be about equal, and you do that with your arms, then what you've got is a spine that is supported by your own touch. And so the upper spine will be supported by your own touch. And it's that feeling of the heart coming through. Um, and in fact, that action by itself invites a core responsiveness to so feeling coming together. Okay, not a feeling of squeezing your muscles and putting yourself around, which is artificial. It's a, feel, it's a feeling of resting into support, resting into space, whatever happens, and then supporting yourself so you bring your weight into about equal touch, which is quite a natural thing to do. You breathe. To take advantage of your relationship with space on that side, because essentially you know, this is the same as a flex pattern, but it's on the side. Okay, so it's a relax, it's a relaxation into the space that you're opening. It's not a hanging away from it to stretch. It's a meeting in this space with the breath, with the support that keeps your base about equal. And then, if you stay with that as you release the breath, then what happens is the the breath releasing away from where you've found space, the anchoring of the ribs to the base in a crisscross fashion, that pulls the thoracic spine into extension on that side as you turn. And hopefully if you've done that without um, pulling with your groins, because when you pull with your groins, you, you pull on the lumbar spine is a reason for leaving the hips alone when you twist. So finding a relaxed relationship to space, finding a supportive relationship to touch, an equal uh, relationship to your base, uh, and uh, an active relationship to touch that supports you as you breathe, as you meet space. And then as you release the breath, the core of the body takes over as you gather towards your base, as you are supported away from your base in the middle. And, uh, and when you get there, uh, the job is to relax. Because uh, it's not that you, you're, you, because you, you're not holding yourself up anymore. Uh, the, the back of the waist is still open. The back of the neck is not lifting to hold yourself up. The thoracic spine was drawn closer to the hands by the use of the limbs. But now that it's got there, the stuff around it, the breathing mechanism around it, is the thing that supports that centering. You'll feel physically centered in the, in the core, but the center of gravity is somewhere behind the heart. So that as you let go of the breath, um, 
from the lungs, there's a deflation towards that place, that central place, that is the heart. So letting go of pressure and the, the body around that quite naturally comes together, front to back, side to side. And in that moment, there's a potential to release vertically through your spine. And when you release through the axis of the spine, uh, with its center in the heart, center of opening in the heart, then by definition, the whole of the spine is elongated because you've, you've not lifted and shortened the lumbers, you've not lifted to shorten the neck. And what's more, the upper spine, the curve of the, 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 sorry, the curve of the upper back has come through a little. So, so the whole of the spine is as long as it can possibly be. And it's because you let go of the breath through your base. And that release through your base propels you in space. You end up with a relationship between heavens, heaven and earth that allows you to relax into uprightness. And that becomes the practice. How to let go. Good. Okay, um, that's about it. It's um, nearly 11 o'clock now, so I, I shall sign off in a minute. Um, yes, uh, as I was saying, haptic intelligence course, it's, uh, it's, it's fully booked now for the live places. Um, but I, have, because there's a, there was a few people that was asking, I am offering the uh, another possibility where you can follow the recordings or uh, probably the next day because uh, it will take a, an hour or so to get the videos up um, the, but um, you can follow the recordings and what what I'm offering is two or three half hour one-to-one -one sessions with you over the six weeks so that um, I get to spend some time watching uh, how you're interpreting the information and how you're practicing. I, I can see sort of nuances moment by moment. And, uh, and I can help you sort of get the precision of the thing um, by, by working with you on time. Of course, it's, it's much closer, so I only need to do that two or three times over the week for you to get everything you need, you see? That's the idea. So that, that's, a, that's a possibility. You can still join the course uh, and, and not be on the, necessarily on the recorded version yourself. When you get to uh, go through that at home at, at your own leisure, I, I suggest the next day, and um, and then booking a few half hour one to ones with me. Uh, that's that's an option for those that that um, still want to do it and can't get a seat. Um, what else have I got going on? I've got my workshop in Brighton this Sunday. It's uh, it's relationship to space is the is this second um, fundamental principle. Um, yoga solutions, bring anything you like. That's uh, Sunday the, um, oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, sun, Sunday the, uh, it's the 19th in Glasgow, so that makes it the 13th. Sunday the 13th in Brighton at Unit 4, and then in Glasgow it's Saturday the 19th at uh, In The Moment Centre. Um, it's, it's great for teachers and um, a great any kind of body worker, but it's also good for absolute beginners who haven't got any idea about what yoga is. Um, it, it seems to be, it seems to work at both ends of the scale. Those with enormous amount of experience that are looking for something much deeper, more effective, and those with sort of no experience that have no preconceptions. Um, it seems to work quite well. So uh, come along if you're interested and you're looking for solutions. Um, and that's about it. Oh, yeah, I'm in London in October. There's a Saturday the 26th, I think. Yes, so this month, Saturday the 26th at Stretch in Ada Street, London. I'm doing a Yoga Solutions Afternoon workshop there. Come along. And I will be doing, uh, I'm thinking of um, doing a um, returning to London Bridge venue to do my one-to-ones for people in London if anyone's interested. I'll put a mail out um, today probably to, to see if um, anyone in the London area would like to come and work with me on tour. Okay, that'll do. Um, I hope that was useful. If it was, then feel free to share it about. Um, 
Yes, and I shall see you same time, same place next week. I'm Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga, signing off. Lots of love to you all. Bye now.